All right, YouTube, I keep getting questions on this Kodiak generator. So I thought I'd post one last review, probably. Uh, this is on the charging capability of the Kodiak. You can look on the Energy website to determine the max charging capability. Um, the input with the highest input ability is this. And don't quote me, I think it's like 600 watts or more that this can handle. Um, this cable, by the way, is hard to find. This is called a Nutric cable. And uh, I had to actually get a custom order through Energy to hook up with my existing panels, which use MC4 connectors. They do sell their proprietary solar panels, but I already had a big investment in my Renogy panels. And I asked them if they could make this for me, and it's pretty easy for them. I had to follow up a couple times requesting them to do this. I think they charged me $20, $25 for it. And so I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to plug this into my solar system and show you the charging of the energy and how, how it works. All right, I just thought I'd show my solar panels real quick. I have two 150 watt Renogy panels and 100 watt portable Renogy panels. So a total of 400 watts. As everyone knows, they're only 70, 80% efficient or whatever. And depending on solar, you won't get anywhere near 400 watts most of the time. Okay, before I hook up the Kodiak to my solar array, I wanted to show the Yeti. The Yeti is somewhere around 85% charged, and it's receiving uh, 211 watts of uh, input power. Now, I believe, uh, according to the specs, the Yeti can receive up to 240 from the Anderson inputs which I have a defective Anderson pole port connector, actually, or uh, combined 240 out of these two inputs, so it can still uh, receive 210 watts, uh, 240 watts there. Now this is kind of warm, so I'm gonna actually read the goal zero specs again uh, to see if uh, you, can, you can get 240 in one without a problem here. But anyways, I wanted to show you, now this is pretty much 90% charge, so I probably won't get as much solar into this right now because it's almost charged, but let's hook it up and see what happens. All right, folks, I have my solar array plugged into my uh, 400 watts of solar, of which it's, it's not getting full charge. I'm guessing about 200 watts is going into this. The problem with the uh, Kodiak Energy is the, the display. You can see it's turned off right now, and you can see the display. And you can see 1.37 AP, 11.99 UV, 16.4 Watt. Uh, so it, it's kind of confusing determining how much Watt is going into the unit. Again, it's almost fully charged. Let me turn it on. You can see it's almost fully charged. So probably a very small amount is going into it. So this is probably not a good test for you. Um, this is the amount of watts just by turning on the inverter. It's using uh, 11 watts just turning on the inverter and of course it's blowing the fan and So I turn it off and then it's not using any power and then this will cycle uh, I think that's one point something amps coming into it. It says WP I'll look up in the manual what that means and I'll make a comment, but here's how you charge the the energy Kodiak with the high capacity charging port, which I believe is 600 watts charging input max, and uh, with the MC4 connections. Now you can get their panels, which are really cool. If you've not if you've not purchased any panels yet, you might want to purchase their panels because they got some really cool features, uh, and you don't need special connectors. But if you already got a, a, an array of Renogy panels uh, or anything with MC4 based connectors. Then, then you can connect it, uh, ask Energy for this custom cable, and you can plug into your Kodiak Energy. Um, I might do a follow-up clip. I'll drain this further, and maybe tomorrow or later this week, I will show uh, what it looks like when it, it's almost drained and, and it gets a huge charge, okay? All right, folks, in the interest of being truthful in my videos, I wanted to tell you this uh, custom cable that Energy sent me. Uh, I've only had it hooked up for, uh, I don't know, five minutes or so, and, and the, it's really, really hot to the touch, and I think only roughly 200 watts is going into it, and I'm thinking this cable 
uh, you can see how it is compared to my finger. I think it's it's very, very, very thin cable that they use, and I don't think this wire is capable of transmitting the kind of 600 watt power that's necessary. Um, even my, you can see my goal zero. Uh, look how thick this input cable is compared to my thumb. It, it's here. I'll compare it here. You can see the energy one is much thinner. Even even the uh, goal zero one gets warm to the touch. Now this is much thicker cable and uh, by the way all the MC4 connections, all these cables here are cool to the touch. So um, I'm going to contact Energy and uh, see if they can get me a thicker cable. I, I believe their electrical engineer at Energy will agree with me this is too thin of a cable to use on a port that's capable of over 600 watt input uh, on their, on their uh, uh, nutrient connector uh, input. So any, anyways, uh, before I do any sort of high power tests, I want to talk with the engineer energy just to make sure uh, what they sent me is the best device.